couple of things I need to mention uh, that I didn't quite get to in the last video. On this graph, this slope of this total output function, you could call this a total product function, the slope of a total function gives you a marginal function. And so the slope here is the marginal product we were looking at. And as the slope gets flatter, the marginal product is going down in the table. So that's what we were looking at right here, 6, 2.5 down to 1.4. Now, I also was remiss in not mentioning some of these other vocabulary words to you. Um, marginal returns means how much additional output do we get when we add one more unit of a variable input. To translate that into more plain English, marginal returns here is what we're calling marginal product for labor. It means how much more output are we getting for each additional worker or hour worked. And they're decreasing. And so these three terms, terms here, increasing marginal returns, that would be a case where we have more output for the second worker than for the first worker, right? More additional output. So one worker gives us a little more output, but the second really adds a lot more output. That's what increasing marginal returns means. Now, my best example for how this might come about is in the moving industry. One moving person helping move furniture and things like that, they could move some furniture, a little bit of furniture, but when you add a second person, that really increases the amount of furniture you can move quickly. This is why you always have to get a friend to help you move. You're just not going to be very quick at all with one person moving beds and dressers and mattresses, but two people can really get things moving very quickly. So in that case, the second worker actually adds more to production than the first did. So that's an example of increasing marginal returns. Now the typical case is, at least at some point, decreasing marginal returns. Even though the second moving person, uh, say one person could move one large piece of furniture an hour into a truck, but two people could move four heavy pieces of furniture into a truck. So the second person adds even more. But think about the third person. The third person probably won't add as much as the second person did. Why? Well, you're having to sh share the same materials, the same uh, moving cart, for example. And so at some point, you're going to have decreasing marginal returns. And in this example, we just started off having marginal decreasing marginal returns for the second, third, and fourth, and fifth people. And that's due to this production function that we used. Now, um, now mathematically, if you want to get a, a really mathematical here, the, uh, it's due to the fact that the square root function uh, is an increasing function, but at a decreasing rate. Anyway, so constant marginal returns would, would be some kind of uh, production technology where the first worker adds 10 units of output and the second worker adds another 10 units of output and the third worker another 10 units of output. So three workers give you 30 units, four workers 40, five units 50. The same amount of additional output as you add additional workers. But this idea of increasing or decreasing or constant marginal returns is not just limited to labor. It's any kind of variable input, things you can change in the short run. So you can think about, uh, for farming, fertilizer and water and seeds might be short run, you know, things you could calculate marginal returns for. Um, for uh, electricity or um, materials, things like this, you could calculate the marginal returns. Now, in contrast, something that is often very uh, commonly confused with this marginal returns, because it sounds similar, is the idea of returns to scale. Be very careful when you're thinking about this. When you say marginal returns, you are, you think about the word ceteris paribus in economics. Ceteris paribus means all else held equal. 
Marginal returns, you're holding everything constant except for one thing. You're adding another worker. Adding another worker. But returns to scale, you are changing everything at once. Scale, to think about what the concept of scale means, think about a scale model of a car or a scale model of a house. You're not just reducing the size of one thing, you're reducing the size of everything. So when you scale an operation down, you're using less workers, less machines, less buildings, less electricity. If you're scaling up an operation, you're scaling up everything. You're going to use more workers, more buildings, more machines, more everything. So if you're looking at increasing returns to scale, what you're saying is that a larger operation that has more of everything, more factories, more machines, more management, more workers, more materials, more everything, increasing returns to scale would mean that a larger operation, of, more of everything, is more efficient. But decreasing returns to scale is the opposite. A bigger operation is less efficient, less productive. So if you were to increase the number of machines and workers and everything, you're asking, what happens to productivity? What happens to the efficiency or the costs of that, uh, of that kind of facility? Now, let's see what happens in this case with increasing returns to scale. Let's compare this line, this last line in this table, where we had five workers and we had 13.4 um, units of output. Let's scale up this operation. Let's double the size of the entire operation by doubling the number of workers to 10 and doubling the number of machines from the 9 that we had in the last example to 18. What's going to happen here? So going back to this production function, Q is 2 times the square root of the number of workers times the square root of the number of machines. So what we had last time was 9 machines, and we saw that that equation simplified to Q equals 6 times the square root of the number of workers. And when we plugged in 5 workers into that in our table, we came up with 13.4 units of output. And so let's type that out there. 13.4 uh, units with five workers. Right Now, what if we double the size of everything? 10 workers and, instead of nine machines, 18 machines. What's going to happen? Well, I plugged in um, 18 into this function. So we get two uh, the quantity equals 2 times the square root of 18. And the square root of 18 is, um, let's see, 4.24, roughly. And if you multiply that times the um, 2, I got that actually wrong here. Let's see, times 2 equals, that should be 8.8. Let's call it 8.5 times the square root of L. Now, what's going to happen? We doubled the number of machines. Let's see what happens when we also double the number of workers. Let's put in the square root of 5 into this function. So multiply that times the square root of 5 and see how much output we would get. We're going to get 18.9 units with 10 workers, but uh, keep in mind, we didn't just increase the number of workers, we also doubled the number of machines to 18 machines. What is our conclusion about doing this and why did we do it? Well, we're going through the thought experiment asking, do we have efficiencies of scale? If we scale up the whole operation, do things get better for us somehow? Do things get cheaper or more productive? Or do they get less productive? Now in this case, we saw with nine machines and five workers, we get 13.4 units of output. With double the resources, double the machines, and double the workers, did our output double? 
Sure didn't. Double the output would have been 26.8 units of output. But we doubled the machines, we doubled the workers, and we didn't double the output. So what does that tell us about how efficient we would get if we scaled up, if we increased the scale? Uh, it means we'd actually get less efficient, less productive. We'd be doing better to open up two small operations, each with five workers and nine machines, um, each with 13.4 units, rather than one big operation with 10 workers and 18 machines. Now, sometimes we see this decreasing returns to scale because it gets harder and harder to manage such a large, unwieldy uh, organization. But sometimes you can actually get more efficient with a larger operation. So now we're going to look at this uh, same function with a different perspective.